Hey everyone, let's take a look at the ballpoint plugin. So how does it work? It's important to understand that the plugin forms strokes from segments. Basically they're polygons, like in 3D modeling. So if we reduce the stroke count, stroke subdivision, and increase the stroke width, we'll see these segments. And the lower the stroke subdivision, the more clearly each segment is visible. But at these larger sizes, you can also see the joints between segments. Don't worry though, in typical use cases, this doesn't get in the way. Because uh, stroke width is usually small enough that you don't notice them. Let's take a look at the stroke length, which when increased determines the length of each stroke. But the shape also changes every time. So in animation, it'll look more like the growth of E. coli after a dinner at a New Delhi train station. If you really want to animate the growth of these little hairs, use the trim segments parameter. Obviously, ink color just changes the color of the strokes, but the use original color checkbox draws each segment using the color of the pixel it's based on. This becomes more noticeable if you increase stroke width and decrease the number of segments using subdivision. However, there's a thing that can be confused with use original color. If I disable it and enable paint on original image and set blending mode to cutout, it'll look a bit like use original color. But increasing the stroke width will show that here the strokes are just being used as masks. By the way, speaking of masks, let's choose some preset like five o'clock shadow and draw a mask. The hairs are too small, but it's already clear that the image isn't just being cut out. It's being limited to the area of the mask. If you increase the stroke length, you can see how it works. Increasing stroke subdivision too can make these lines more expressive. It's really fun to play with. I haven't mentioned the other modes in Blending Mode yet. Just to clarify, they only work if Paint On original image is selected. You're probably familiar with Add and Multiply modes. That's just adding and multiplying colors. And works well with uh, for light strokes you want to overlay and multiply it for dark ones. Max and Min work a bit differently. They also serve for light and dark colors, respectively. Max just keeps whichever color is lighter. So pure white will be on top of all pixels. And pure black won't show up at all. Mean is exactly the opposite, so it's better for darker colors. And really, the strokes are either above the base pixel or beneath it. Uh, so there's not really blending, it's either shown or not. The detail radius defines the scale of details to consider when building strokes. The smaller the detail radius, the less distinguishable the features of the image, and it looks more like noise since very fine details are being considered. When the detail radius is really large, it only reacts to big shapes, and details get lost. Strokes will form around areas with too large details, which also makes them indistinct. The optimal value is somewhere in between and depends on the desired style. Then the coverage energy parameter. The higher the coverage energy, the more the strokes start to twist into spirals or curls. But at low values, the strokes start to look more like trim path, as if the line length cuts off early. The edge tracking steps option is the number of preliminary steps the stroke segment takes before it starts drawing. These steps let them orient themselves to the image's structure and begin moving toward the shape or edge. At low values, the strokes look more chaotic, but not like in detail radius, since the image doesn't turn completely into noise. And at higher values, the direction becomes more expressive and precise, leaving more open spaces between strokes. The stroke angle 
and crosshatch angle parameters control the angles of the stroke segments. Basically, all strokes are split into two parts. Stroke angle defines the angle for the first half of the strokes and crosshatch angle for the second half. This is more clearly seen in the crosshatching preset. Note that angle shifts the actual movement direction of the segments and at some point the angle might be such that the stroke barely moves and stays in its little space. I think random seed is self-explanatory. It defines variation for stroke simulation. So if you want to duplicate a layer but have it uh, slightly different from the previous one, just change the random seed. And lastly, a sort of optional embellishment is Glow. It's more clearly visible in the Robocop preset. Here, Glow is set to noise mode, meaning each pixel is randomly spread. The number of these pixels is determined by the sample's parameter. To see this better, let's increase the size, but now we also need to increase the intensity because the pixel spread got too big. And now we can see that glow becomes less harsh as samples go up. We can also tweak the threshold parameter, which controls how more or less contrasty the glow transition is. So by adjusting threshold, intensity, and size, we can control the glow's look. Besides noise, there's also a fast blur as a glow type. Even though it's called fast, it works slower than noise. Uh, if we reduce stroke count, trim segments, and glow samples, we can take a look at how it works. Fast blur is more like a circular blur algorithm, while Gaussian blur has a slightly different shape. Try experimenting with both, now, there's not so much difference, but Gaussian golden is very different. Uh, the point distribution there uh, resembles the pattern of sunflower seeds, uh, which can look pretty cool. Well, that's basically it. I hope you find this plugin useful. Wishing you creative success.